hi all so welcome to this channel and in this video session i'll discuss a new topic so we'll be starting uh, this series on ifs from today and we'll be uploading more and more topics on this so that you will uh, grasp uh, the understanding of the ifs on ibm i and uh, uh, maybe uh, later we'll be discussing how we can access the ifs or uh, do something on IFS using the uh, programs so let's start with the basic introduction first in this video and we'll then move on to this in I will discuss next things in the next videos so first thing is uh, what is IFS basically so uh, if I would say uh, IFS is integrated file system so which means uh, integrated file systems means we have uh, multiple file systems where uh, different different things uh, got stored and they are integrated into one thing so basically integration doesn't mean that all file, file systems come together in a one file system so they are actually a separate file system so let's say file system 1 file system 2 and 3 okay and then we are integrating them so we are making them uh, looks like one so that that's why we are uh, saying that an IFS so IFS is uh, providing uh, a feature to access all of them in a same way so so IFS is basically something which provides storage management to us on the different file systems and uh, you can say uh, it also supports the stream input output which means uh, we can have the uh, stream files uh, having a long continuous string of data uh, on the IFS and uh, we can have that as an input from our side or then or an output also we can receive from somewhere else as well so IFS is something which uh, supports the stream files and uh, uh, the storage management thing. So uh, that's what the IFS is. Now we have a uh, 10 file systems here in the IFS. So I have mentioned all of them here. Uh, so let's discuss this one QNTC. So QNTC is the net client. Uh, file system uh, which is basically uh, which basically allows us to access the the objects or objects stored on the iaccess server uh, integrated x series server which is uh, which uh, which is running nt windows nt 4.0 or any linux server or or any remote ibm i server which is running nt 4.0 you can say so we can access the objects on this server using this file system the another file system is NFS so uh, whatever is stored on the NFS uh, server uh, we can access that using the NFS file system user defined file system so these are defined by the user and uh, uh, they can be maintained by the user as well so uh, whatever they are in the u in the user uh, file or they in their area whatever the objects are they in the their area they can be accessed using the user defined file systems q file server file server basically file server uh, file system so this is something uh, which uh, I would say that whatever the um, whatever the objects which is stored on the IBM I remote server, so that could be accessed through the file server uh, dot 400 file system. QOPT is something um, you can say optical file system. So whatever the objects or things stored on the optical media that can be accessed through this file system qdls is uh, 
something uh, where uh, you can say uh, it's something uh, where you have the folders or the documents so it's basically an hierarchical uh, way and hierarchy it provides a hierarchical structure to the folders and the documents stored inside the folders uh, like as you stored them on your PC Windows PC and next next one is ispqsys.lib so ispqsys.lib is something which is independent qsys or library uh, file system um, which is you can say uh, provide the library structure of the QSIS library on the independent ASPs installed on your IBM I machine. So if you have any independent ASP installed on your IBM I machine, so whatever the libraries associated with that ASP or the objects inside that would be accessed through this. So the other objects on the system which are not there in that ASP or the libraries on the system which is not there on the ASP uh, couldn't be access through this is isp qsys.lib uh, file system qsys.lib is something um, which is same as isp but in this case we can access all of the objects or the libraries uh, which are there in the qsys so it's the, it, it doesn't matter uh, it does not have to take uh, care of the asps so whatever there in the qsys can be accessed through this so in QSIS we have different libraries and in those libraries we have different objects uh, such as database files so we can access all of them using the QSIS that is a library file system QOpenSys so open system library uh, open system uh, file system is a uh, compatible uh, is more compatible with you can say uh, unix operating systems uh, which are uh, open standards like POSIX so you can access um, those things from here and the root is the main uh, root is the main file system where uh, you can have all the features available like the uh, hierarchy thing uh, it's more like uh, it have some features of the DOS as well um, and uh, you can see it ha it supports the directory structures as well where uh, directory have objects or the files and the subdirectories as well so let me show you we can access this using the command work link so you can see uh, currently uh, this is my home directory which uh, I am seeing so let's see the root so I can see the root by using the slash just take 5 so you can see all these things where you can see this QDLS, QFileServer, NTC, OpenSys, QOPT, QSys.lib etc so you can access the uh, file systems from here by using work link command on the IBM machine now uh, what are the key features of the uh, IFS so uh, one important thing is the uh, stream file support as I can as I would say that it stores a long continuous string of data and uh, so that's the important thing so which is uh, basically uh, can be used uh, with the file or with the server or client applications uh, like uh, we are something we are receiving some documents or the files uh, in a continuous stream from the client or we are sending from server to the client so in those uh, applications uh, it's a good support and it it basically provides a hierarchical directory structure that is everything is there in the uh, directory or in the library so 
whether an object or a database file or anything else uh, so which provides a hierarchical directory structure so you need to access any object so its path so we need to um, traverse through the directory or the subdirectory to reach to the particular point or to a particular file or particular object so uh, the next thing is the common interface so why i would uh, i have this point uh, just because I, I i tell at the very beginning that we have different file systems and we have we are integrating them so we have a common interface that is called as the ifs interface so that ifs interface is basically deals with the different different let's say here we have 10 file systems so different different file systems and so we can say that we have a common interface that deals with the different file systems and then that responds to the uh, server uh, through the through the server to the uh, uh, different IBMI users accordingly now one one more thing here is the common view so since we have the common interface so i would say that we have a common view as well where everyone looks ifs in the same way that if you want to access some other uh, uh, two users can come and one was accessing uh, let's say qsys.lib and another one is accessing like uh, qdls or anything else so they are accessing the same thing through the same view that is the ifs and within the uh, that is the ifs interface so you can see we have a common interface and a common int uh, view so that's why these are the key features of these uh, of the ifs and the next uh, thing is the structure of ifs on uh, ibm if i would say for the let's say for the libraries we have five so inside the libraries we have stored the files like the database files which we can access through the ifs using the qsys.lib uh, we have uh, we have different directories uh, in the um, uh, in the ifs so we can access the stream files stored or, or the objects stored inside the uh, directories so in a hierarchical uh, way so that's the thing another thing is like folders we have folders in qdls so where we can have the uh, documents inside those folders or we can have folders inside the folders subfolders you can say and then we have document so this way this is the structure which, uh, which is supported on the ifs on ibmi uh, then why uh, why we use ifs so um, basically we use ifs just to mention the few things here um, as i already discussed as a feature of the uh, that it's a common interface so i would say uh, we use into because it's uh, common interface to the several file system so that's why we should use this ifs to access several file systems or access several objects or data objects or files inside that uh, file systems so we can uh, use the ifs in that case um, another thing is uh, like a fast access so if uh, i want some file or data from the ibm i so so i can access it fastly through the ifs so uh, that's uh, another thing and uh, yeah the last thing which i already told in my in my this video that it supports stream file so i am uh, putting some putting this line every time on every in every aspects that we have a support on stream file so that's what uh, a good feature and i would say uh, uh, it it opens the scope for future technologies as well uh, open open technology open source technologies so uh, we should uh, uh, we should be using a stream file on the ifs because it supports that and we'll be um, you can say uh, 
communicating with the different uh, technologies outside the IBM so that's all uh, those things uh, which is come which comes under the introduction of the to the IFS on IBM uh, in my next video we will be uh, discussing uh, further things in in this regard uh, so that uh, video by video or uh, I will get the uh, good understanding of how the IFS works on IBM I or how we can communicate with the IFS uh, through our RPG programs so that's all in this video thank you and have a nice